So we're heading down to my local slab yard today. I, they're actually consolidating their yard and um, they're trying to lower some of their inventory. So I've been working with them for years. I have a really good, strong vendor relationship with them and they offered to give me some really good pricing on some wood. So we are headed down there to go pick up those slabs and a few other items. And we thought we'd take this opportunity to actually record a video on how to buy slabs. I get that question a lot on Instagram how to buy slabs, what to look for, what to avoid, stuff like that. So we're gonna go down there. I brought the tools that I take with me whenever I go slab buying and uh, we're gonna show you my process and how that works. You're on camera, enjoy it. <laughs> What's going on? Not much, we're just um, disposing of some slabs and then moving all this stuff over there because we're going to be getting in um, a sh crap load. Of, we can uh, bleep it, it's fine. Okay, we're getting in a <laughs> lot of logs cool. today, any minute, and tomorrow. The wood I need, I'm trying to build a six foot diameter dining table, so I need at least, at least six and a half feet of good usable stock. And a lot of this stuff you can see, like here, this is, this is just checked so bad that not much of this is going to be used. Basically, all of this would have to get tossed. So I can cut around it, but at a certain point, it's not worth the effort. Um, if it's damaged here on the outside, it's probably damaged in here on the inside. And there's probably a lot of checking on the internal checking that you can't see from the surface. So also this from here to this corner, you have a huge amount of bow. So this piece doesn't look great. But the other side of that coin is that this is a very thick piece of wood. So if I take it down to thickness where it needs to be, it's probably going to end up being about one and a half to two inches thick. And I can probably get some decent enough stock out of there. It looks pretty much quarter sawn all the way through. And that is the mostly what I'm going after. I'm trying to avoid plain sawn wood. And I'll, I'll explain here in a minute what those differences are. But what I'm doing now is looking at this piece and I'm breaking out my block, my little block plane, and I'm gonna get my moisture meter out and kind of take a look at the moisture content. Typically at this yard, I know how long these slabs have been here. The, these slabs have been air drying for seven plus years, so I know these are dry. They're gonna have surface moisture on them because we just had a rain. Uh, so I don't, I don't often bring my moisture meter to this yard. There are definitely other yards I go to where I have to have this because I have had incidents where they tell me, oh yeah, 10%. 10%, that's their standard answer is, oh yeah, it's 10%, and then I get it back and it's 25 plus. So um, I, highly, I highly suggest that if you're gonna start getting into the slab game, you get a moisture meter of some sort. The real thing that I'm looking for, like I said before, is quarter sawn, because I don't like when it's plain sawn. It looks, this is your plain sawn piece here. And what's happening is they're basically running the bandsaw mill across the piece this way, and you're getting like a part of a tree branch coming out of here, and this is very, unstable wood here so it just doesn't it's not nearly as appealing to me visually as this straight grain wood is it looks so much nicer and the other thing to, to factor in with this is that this is a much more stable slab because it is quarter sawn the other really important tool that i bring to the slab yard always is my tape i always have my tape on me because i don't want to say they're trying to to screw you over on the price but some of the yards, they'll put a board footage amount on some of these things, and it's not, it's not a nefarious action. I think it's someone very quickly trying to mark up the slab to get a price. They'll throw a board footage on there, and so it's just not accurate. So I like to bring my own tape measure and, and measure out what the actual board footage of each slab is um, because it's really important to know what you're actually paying for. I mean, you could get taken advantage of very easily. Uh, some of the other things you want to look out for is just really major defects, um, obviously this piece of wood had some sort of infestation whether it was uh, mold or or bugs or whatever um, this has rot in it so some people will turn that into a uh, that into a character thing with the, the with the slab and they'll 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 build around it and make it a center focal point of the piece of wood and that's fine they'll fill it with epoxy they'll do whatever they'll make it whatever they want to do with it and showcase this character or defect um, for what I'm going to be building, I'm not going to do that. I need as much clear as possible wood as I can. I mean, when you're dealing with urban salvaged lumber or, or slabs or logs or anything like that, there's just going to be some defects that you have to work around. That's kind of why slab furniture is more expensive because there's more labor involved 
with the processing side of it. And this is the reason why I bring my plane to the, to the slab yard. This is beautiful wood. I love English elm. It's, it's very chocolatey and it has really nice natural like earth tones to it. I mean, it, it's a natural piece of wood, so it's of course gonna be natural earth tones, but it really is like browns and tans and khaki colors. It's really pretty stuff. But if you came here and you didn't know anything about what this species is or had never worked it before, you'd probably see how gray and bleached out this was and thought, man, this looks terrible. Uh, but when, I, when you get down below the surface, it's beautiful. It's beautiful wood and Another thing about English elm that's separate to this point is that this wood tools incredibly well and it smells really good. It's almost got like a spicy mahogany smell. So um, this is a really cool species. I really like this one a lot. And if you were someone coming to the slab yard for the first time, not knowing what you're looking for, never worked with English elm, you wouldn't know that below the surface is this beautiful wood. One thing you want to consider with these air dried slabs is that they're sitting outside they are seeing a lot of weather over the years. They're seeing a lot of rain, a lot of cold nights, and a lot of really hot summer days, especially here in Sacramento. We get 210 plus. So that energy, all that wood movement and energy over time gets built up in these pieces of wood and they get a lot of tension. What'll happen is sometimes you'll take, a, we'll say this piece of wood, if we threw this down on the CNC to start flattening it, we could remove you know, a quarter inch of material from the top, that's a lot of material. Um, and that was kind of holding the wood in place. As soon as we remove that, the wood could just buckle and turn into a taco. Um, these things happen with these pieces of wood. It's something you really need to be mindful of when you're buying um, uh, live edge, urban salvage lumber that's been air dried. And that could even happen in a kiln too. You can get a lot of that in a kiln. There's, it's, it's, there's just a lot of factors that put a lot of energy into this grain that can make it really just change its shape after you've started processing it. So if we're working on a slab like this and we start to remove some of the material to flatten it and it starts to fold up on us, we'll actually stop the milling process and we will set the slab aside for a few days to let it rest and then we'll start milling the other side, or excuse me, we'll start flattening the other side. Um, then we'll kind of see if we remove, sometimes what'll happen is we'll remove the material from the other side and that will release tension from the, the opposing tension and it will flatten itself back out. That happens more often than not actually, but it's really good to, when you're removing lots of material from these things to let them rest in, in between processes because it's really hard on the piece of wood. This is quite the haul. This, all this stuff was gonna be tossed, so I did get a good deal on this, which is really great, and I love keeping it out of the, out of the trash, which is, I just love doing that. It's kind of like the heart of salvaged wood keeping it from going to the landfill. So we got this all loaded up, everything's strapped down. We got this really cool piece. This is gonna be a future build very soon, I think. We're really excited about this, but either way, I really hope this video was helpful for you. And if you are getting into looking at slabs or doing slab furniture or anything live edge like this, I hope this is a good resource for you and it helped you out and that you have some confidence to go buy your own slabs to build your own stuff. Thanks for watching.